Parents today are faced with the task of preparing young people for a future of which no one can be quite sure. Thoughtful parents try to help their children develop sound personalities so they will adjust themselves easily to life. Take the Wilson family. Janet is 17. Tom is 14. Tom and Janet are typical teenagers, no better and no worse than the average. Adolescents can't be treated as children. Their needs are different. During childhood, certain needs were met in the home and in school. But as the child becomes a teenager, he's faced with a whole new set of problems which he has to work out for himself. There have been great physical changes to which he must adjust. His contact with the world outside has taken on a new aspect. As well as meeting many more people, he's expected to get along better with them. Oh, Miss Wilson. Honey, you won't forget to put the rubbish out this morning for me, will you, please? Yeah, okay. And there's a listing on the table. Will you just pick it up and stop at the grocers on the way down? He no longer has the carefree and irresponsible attitude of a child towards his parents and friends. Mrs. Wilson can help Tom in the process of growing up if she realizes he has the same needs as the child for affection, care, and guidance. But the way in which these needs are met should change as the situation changes. First, there are certain basic physical needs. Boys and girls at this age should have plenty of fresh air. During these years of rapid growth, exercise is necessary for full development of bones, muscles, and nerves. Organized games meet this need, but they also provide much more than exercise. Team play encourages cooperation, loyalty, and the spirit of fair play. Competition with others of his own age teaches good sportsmanship and helps the teenager to appraise himself in relation to others. The teenager's food intake is tremendous. Mrs. Wilson knows that Tom and Janet eat all kinds of odd things between meals, but she takes care to see that at regular mealtimes, each day's menu provides a balanced diet. And adolescents need a great deal of rest. Although they may seem physically mature, they are still growing quickly and burning up energy. They should have good facilities for sleep, privacy, quiet, and fresh air. Often they need guidance to make sure that they use these facilities to advantage by going to bed at an hour that will ensure sufficient sleep. And there are definite mental needs during adolescence. Tom's mind is developing rapidly and he needs to exercise his new ability to think. He reads more, and his choice of reading matter is more serious. He watches movies and television more critically. He has his own theories about how the characters should behave. Talks with his friends have become less aimless than they were in childhood. They discuss many everyday topics, even argue, while they may seem dogmatic and overconfident, they really use these discussions to work out their own ideas more clearly. A good educational program keeps pace with this rapid development because educators know that if the teenager ever loses interest in study, it's difficult to revive that interest. Therefore, the curriculum should be difficult enough to provide a challenge to the student's interest. It should also encourage the development of initiative and the ability to make decisions. New ideas should be introduced to stimulate further mental development. Visual materials and modern methods go a long way toward providing this stimulus. Janet is reaching the end of high school. A decision on her future career is becoming a real issue. She has a pretty clear idea that she wants to be a nurse but practical and sympathetic advice from the vocational counselor helps her to decide on courses and look at the future realistically. But education has two sides. 
One is the direct instruction that is given in school and at home. The other is less direct. I understand all that. But if a Jew isn't going to be accepted in our lodge, then I don't want any part of it. No, I'm sorry, Dick. I just can't see it that way. Who you met at, Pop? That was the secretary of the lodge. You know, Tom, some people have queer ideas of democracy. The teenager's attitude to life and to other people is strongly influenced by what they observe and overhear. Why can't he be on the team? Plays ball as good as you do, doesn't he? He's got as good as grades you have, too. What's his color got to do with it? The spiritual needs of the adolescent are not always easy to recognize. Tom feels the need of a faith that means something to him. New acquaintance with science, a knowledge of other religions, and a desire to think for himself have led him to question beliefs readily accepted during childhood. Yeah, but how do we know for sure about Adam and Eve? There wasn't anybody else alive then. There wasn't any writing for thousands of years. It was all written down much later by some guy. Maybe he just made it all up. Whether or not he feels free to question his parents' beliefs depends on the kind of religious training he had during childhood. Tom's early training was not dogmatic. Now his doubt is a result of conflict between childhood concepts of religion and his adolescent concepts of the world. To Tom, doubt does not mean rejection of all his beliefs, but adjustment of his beliefs to fit in with his new understanding of life. Discussion with other boys helps Tom in this adjustment, but in addition, he also needs sympathetic guidance from a religious advisor. Janet has passed through this stage of religious doubt and awakening. After friendly discussion with her parents, she has adjusted her childhood beliefs so that they will satisfy her need for a faith with real meaning in adult life. Then there are the social needs of the teenager. Mrs. Wilson recognizes the importance to Tom and Janet of the companionship of other teenagers. And so she is glad when Janet wants to have informal parties at home. She'd rather have it that way than have Janet out at a public dance hall or in a parked car somewhere. The food will be simple, but there'll be lots of it. There'll be some of the very latest records. and enough room for dancing. There's room too for the inevitable horseplay, the silly games and the enthusiastic community singing. And best of all, mother and dad are going to a movie. Tom is not interested in parties and dancing, but he does like to get together with boys of his own age. It's easier for younger teenagers if recreation is organized for them. They haven't yet had enough experience to do it for themselves. Tom is fortunate that he lives in a community wide awake to the needs of its youth. It could be a boys club, a church group, or a 4-H club. Tom enjoys getting together with a wider circle of friends, the feeling of belonging. And young adolescents have a real need to belong. Once they do belong, the group leader can provide guidance in cultivating useful interests and activities. Adolescents need rich creative experience especially during the years of physical change. Besides belonging to the Scouts, Tom is a member of the school drama club. He feels too shy to act, but he likes working on the sets. 
He gets real satisfaction out of this constructive activity, along with other young people, and it's a chance to get to know the girls outside school hours without having to ask for a date. Besides meeting social and emotional needs of its members, the drama club has a great educational and cultural value. Janet, who enjoys organized recreation too, is chairman of the school dance committee. Older teenagers like to do their own organizing, and by setting up a committee and handling all the arrangements themselves, they not only make sure the party will be the way they want it, but they also gain valuable experience in cooperation and leadership. And they learn something about the responsibility of the leaders to the group and the group to the community. Such parties provide a healthy relaxation of the tension that is common during the teen years. Dancing provides an easy way of getting to know members of the opposite sex and builds up self-confidence. Janet and her friends need to get together often. The boys need girls, and the girls need boys. And they need special pals within the crowd. They like to have frequent, intimate conversations with these friends to give them reassurance of friendship. The approval of their own group, and especially of members of the opposite sex, is important to their self-esteem. And finally, the emotional needs of the adolescent. Besides Janet's need for approval by her friends, there are two important needs that must be met at home independence and acceptance. I'm going to bed, Harry. Leave the door unlocked for Janet. I hate to go to bed while she's still out, but she has to grow up sometime, I guess. Where was she going tonight? To the school dance with Jim. She said she'd be home at one o'clock, and she usually comes in when she says she will. Mrs. Wilson realizes that Janet wants to be free to make her own decision about the time she'll be home. But Janet, subconsciously, feels more secure if her mother is concerned about her staying out late. She wants to be grown up and independent, and yet she's not sure enough of her own judgment to accept full responsibility for all her actions. Did you, dear? Oh, Jim is just gorgeous. I guess he must be. He wanted me to go to Nick's after the dance. I told him it was too late. I'm glad you did, dear. It is pretty late. Night, Mom. Oh, he's wonderful. Good night, dear. Night, Mom. Janet seems to need approval for everything she does. And because her mother has always been friendly and understanding, she confides in her. As her daughter grows up, Mrs. Wilson is constantly revising her attitude. She recognizes Janet's need for association with boys, and she sees her need for independence. The guidance and discipline of childhood have been replaced by guidance and trust. And because of this sympathetic attitude, and gradual giving over of responsibility, Janet has been able to behave in a normal 17-year-old way. She's been able to enjoy friendship with boys and yet has not betrayed her mother's trust.
Now, let's see again how the basic needs of adolescents are met. The teenager's life should be planned to meet all the requirements for good physical health. Both at home and at school, the adolescent should have enough mental stimulation to bring about the fullest development of his mind. Teenagers should be encouraged to solve their religious doubts in a way that gives them a faith for life. They need healthy and informal get-togethers with others of their own age. But perhaps the greatest emotional need of both Tom and Janet is the need for acceptance within the family group. Research has proved that the strongest influence for good in teenage behavior is still the home. Most parents and most teenagers are busy, but they do have some time together, and it's not the quantity of time together, but the quality that counts. Good morning. Good morning, Dad. Good morning. Good morning. Did you have a good time last night, Janet? Oh, I sure did. Oh, I sure did. Now, uh, Tom, your sister is under the influence of love this morning. Please be a little more sympathetic. Oh, kiss me. Don't mind him, Jan. He'll learn. Home should be a place where you can say what you think, but it's taken good-naturedly. Not... Where everyday problems of growth are recognized as normal and not fussed over. Hi, folks. Oh, hello, Butch. Come on in. I am in. You like some breakfast, Butch? Thanks, Miss Wilson. I just had mine. Oh. Well, pull up a chair. Home should be a place where friends are welcome. Parents who honestly enjoy family life and show it set an example of healthy, happy living. By offering understanding, guidance, gradual independence, and acceptance within the family group, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson are helping their teenage son and daughter to build sound personalities for whatever the future may bring.